All right, so this is my video on how why I think the Beastmaster Hunter is probably the the easiest class to play. Now, as you see here, I got seven different alts. I got one for each profession. I mainly just have them to build toys and mounts and fun stuff. Because, you know, you, at least in Legion, you level out the gear before you can even have it made. And by the time they can use it, they level up past, you know, you're only wearing it for like maybe a couple days before you find something better in a dungeon. All right, so this is Winter Creek, my main. I have 90 days and almost eight hours of playtime on them. I started back on Christmas 2013 with Miss Pandaria. I am by no means an expert. Yeah, like I said, we'll read the strength and weaknesses off Icy Vein. Even they think it's very easy to play. You have very, very high mo mobility. Uh, you don't have any abilities that require channel channeling, so you don't have to stand still for them. And you have that nice, reliable, sustained damage. Then you have some bursts, like with your uh, Beast Mastery window. You might, you're gonna use uh, with aspect of the wild. You gotta you can kick it a burst. You can pop a potion. But yeah, the drawbacks are is you know based on the other classes, they're not gonna they have as high of a DPS, and the AI of the pet can be a pain in the ass. Like if you're in a dungeon and you jump off a ledge instead of your pet following you or just automatically you know reappearing down below, the pet may run off and go down some stairs way off and aggro everything on its path and bring it all up to you so yeah you definitely want to dismiss your pet before you jump off any ledge you're trying to sneak around an area but there's a enemy over here you don't want to aggro and sometimes when you get up close to something they'll still be the same width apart so you just got to be mindful of your pet all right one of the easiest things about the hunter though is the open world content the pve content that you know, you have feigned death, so you can run through a big mob. And once you get to your closer to your destination, you can feign death. Your pet also now has a feign death. And you lose all that aggro. And especially it comes uh works really well when you have the uh the barding that the level working can make, the stone hide leather barding. Then nothing can dismount you and stun you as you run run past it. And if you have leather working, they last twice as long. So it's like you see here, I'm just running through these mobs. Without a care in the world. Run up to Tar Splitter here. Spitter. Feign death. And I demonstrate, you know, pet feign death if the pets are at, have the aggro instead of you. But ever since even like item level 905, I've been able to two solo most of these uh, Argus Elites because, you know, I have my pet tanking for me and, and holding aggro with Growl. So I can just sit back start running off all my abilities and if any uh, uh, boss's abilities you know come at me I can easily move out of the way so it does take quite a bit of time to get these uh, elites all down and if you're in an area that has a lot of mobs you want to make sure to clear those mobs first because uh, sometimes your pet won't take the aggro off of them because your pet's not close enough to be effect for them to be affected by the growl ability. And one thing I forgot to mention in previously when I was talking about you know dismissing your pet and stuff, whenever you, if you have a pet that has growl on, whenever you go into raid a dungeon, or maybe grouping up with a tank, you want to take that growl off so he doesn't steal the or take the. Uh, aggro away from uh away from the tanks on bosses usually doesn't matter because bosses aren't affected by the growl but you see it's our spitter here is one of the easier uh, argus elites to to take down but as you see i maintain the pet health you know he didn't get too terribly low And we're done. All right, so let's talk about abilities and talents here. So we're just going to end up going through, the, through the, you know, top to bottom. So Murderer Crow, which you can get at level 90, summons a flock of crows that attack your target, and it deals two point, at least at my 
my spec, my level, deals 2.5 million damage over 15 seconds. If the target dies within 15 seconds, the cooldown is reset. It's primarily going to be a single target ability. It does work in multi-target, you know, if the target's going to die within that time, you just got to remember to start, you know, apply it to the next target. Aspect is just a movement increase. They they kind of nerfed it by I think they extended the time on it or extended the cooldown on it. And let's see, aspect of turtle. This is what I call the oh shit button. It gives you a shell, reduces damage, and then also you uh, one of your artifact traits will it makes it so that you heal during the uh, while well, aspect of turtle is out. Aspect of the Wild grants your, you and your pet 10 focus per second and 10% increased critical strike chance on all attacks for 14 seconds. Uh, the, for, the, the time length is extended due to some of the artifact traits. Beast of Wrath. One of your most used abilities sends you and your pet into a rage. Increase all damage you both deal for, by 33% for 15 seconds. And the cooldown on Beast of Wrath is reduced by 12 seconds each time you use Dire Beast. Concussion shot is a is a slow uh, crowd control. Counter shot is a spell interrupt. You can only interrupt the spells that have the uh, yellow channeling bar on you know, NPCs. The dire beast summons a powerful beast to attack. It generates twelve focus over eight seconds. I have the glyph of the dire beast uh, on, which will sometimes the dire beast that comes that's summoned. We'll have the look of one of the pets in your stable. Disengage. This helps you get out of any uh, movement impairing effects. And since I use post haste, then it also uh, will increase my speed by 60%. Well, post haste uh, yeah, does the disengage and increases your movement speed by 60% for five seconds. It's a nice uh, mobility aid. Especially on, uh, can't remember the name of the uh, second to last boss in the second wing, second LFR wing of the Argus raid. It casts that collapsing worlds, and allows you to disengage, really helps you uh, get out of those. Acceleration is just a self heal, two minute cooldown, 30% of your health and 100% of your pet's health. Bane Death will remove um, all aggro off of you. And then the Legion, they did add Play Dead, which will is a Bane Death for your pet. Fetch is just something you can, you can add on. You don't have to have it. It allows you to tell your pet to go loot a corpse. Kind of nice, though, with the because if the pet if the corpse is on a, an area you can't get to, and you use Fetch, your pet will go to it. Fireworks is also just, it used to be an old glyph. Yeah, it's an ability you can get in the class order hall. These two, you can get you can get them in the class order hall. So you can get that, it shoots a little firework in the air. Flare allows you to see uh, hidden or invisible enemies. I usually only use it, I've only had need to use it in like PvP to uh, reveal rogues and such. Intimidation. So with Intimidation, it allows you to stun uh, an enemy for five seconds damage does not remove the stun and this is kind of a point of contention because most guides you're going to see are going to tell you tell you to use binding shots so you get intimidation at level 75 i've never really liked intimidation the only time i've really ever used it was in uh, pvp because there's going to be quite a few npcs even in raids where you can use intimidation and Intimidation, since it is a stun, it will interrupt what I call a gray bar uh, channeling uh, spells, which you would normally not be able to interrupt with the uh, counter shot. It also just adds a second interrupt. Kill Command, one of your main cooldown abilities. Gives the command of the pet to kill, causing your pet to savagely deal damage to the targets 
and it has a 40 yard, 40 yard range, so the pit has to be within 40 yards of the target in order to use it. Misdirection, another one that I've never really used. You get to use misdirection a whole lot more in earlier WoW, where you had to worry about maintaining, you know, not getting too much aggro. You can use misdirect and shift all that aggro over to your, to like your tank. But there is a macro you could use so that uh, misdirection is what I use. Uh, will automatically direct the uh, to your pet, and there's an artifact trait that when you do that, it gives your pet additional damage reduction buff. Well, this shot just shoots out shots out and out in a fan or in a cone. And what it also does is it uh, triggers beast cleave. And Beast Cleave turns your pet's uh, melee attacks into an AoE. And that does that for like four seconds. So most of the time, if you only have three, you know, four, three or four targets, you only have to do misdirection probably, or misdirection, multi-shot. About every four seconds, keep that Beast Cleave going. If you have like six or more, you know, Instead of using Cobra Shot, you'd want to use Multi Shot. Titan Center, this is an art, uh, an artifact ability. Shoots out a jolt of electricity from all your pets. And, do, 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 do. and what I do is, because I have the feet legendaries, I will shift back and forth between the Kill Command and Dire Beast until my Dire Beast is on a longer cooldown, or I know it's going to be on a longer cooldown, then I'll pop Titan's Thunder. That way every pet and beast that's out there will generate that electrical damage. Traps? I really don't use traps too much. The Beastmaster Hunter only has Freezing Trap and Tar Trap. I've never really had to use them in um, open world. Uh, if I aggro something, maybe I'll pop a trap. I'll you know, pop a trap over. Most of the time I use it just in PvP. We already discussed Beast Cleave. Kindred Spirit is just a passive that you'll get during. I don't forget what level. So, since your primary or secondary stat is Mastery, it decreases the damage or increases the damage done by your pet by 69%. While the call, your auto attack critical hit strikes have a chance to reset the cooldown on Dire Beast. And that's going to be come, uh, pretty important here in the way I have my build set up. So, looking at Icy Veins, and I use Icy Veins mostly as a, you know my primary guide. It lists the stat priority for uh, Beastmaster as top priority is critical strike then haste then mastery and then versatility if you're using the zoo stomp build if you're not using the zoo stomp build if you're using dire frenzy then mastery becomes your top priority and that's what i had previously and so that's why my mastery is up so high i got 70 percent i got 34 percent crit 28 percent haste so the reason why critical strike is so high because of your wild call, you want to try to trigger that crit as much as possible with your auto shots. And then the way I have this built, let me look on Icy Pains here off screen. Just to see what their zoo build is set as. It's actually pretty close to what I have. So with my build here, they said, you know, Icy Veins is level 1 or level 15, your first talent. Either Way the Cobra or Dire Stable. I don't find myself uh, focus hungry very much. So that's why I use Way the Cobra. And it affects every pet or guardian you have active. So if you have a guardian from your order hall, there's a 10% increased damage to Cobra Shot. When you have you have your main pet, you have Hottie, those are both 10%. Now you have 30%. And then every time you use uh, Dire Beast, it sends out another pet. There's even another uh, another 
10% for each dire beast you have active. So if you're in like in a raid or dungeon or something, you won't have your guardian with you. But still, you know, that's 20% damage for having uh, Hottie and your pet out. And then usually I can get at least two, sometimes three active uh, pets from dire beast. Depending on if the cooldown wild call triggers the cooldown or reset. Stomp is just a good ability to have. It's AoE, so it's really good with multi target. So, again, if you're using Dire Frenzy, so instead of calling a pet out, you know, having another pet appear, it just causes your, your primary pet to go into a, a frenzy and deal additional damage and get a speed buff. Never used Chimera Shot ever. So out of all of these, and of all these abilities, post haste is always the one I've always have ever used. I've never used any of the other ones. There's just too many times where post haste will be more a better utility. And here's the other one that uh, it's been quite changed. I used to always use Bestial Fury for that, uh, you know, that just static. Uh, damage bonus when Beast of Wrath is active. But when you use one with the pack, and then I also have with the feet. So the feet reduces the Dire Beast, or if you're using Dire Frenzy, it reduces that. So it reduces it, the remaining cooldown on Kill Command every three seconds. So if I'm popping a Wild Call a lot, it re reduces, uh, you know, resets uh, the cooldown of Dire Beast. So you use Dire Beast, you're not only just resetting the cooldown by default on Bestial Wrath by 12 seconds each time. With the legendary feat, I'm also reducing the cooldown of Kill Command by 3 seconds each time it's used. So you can actually start popping off quite a few of these three. You know, there'll be a span where I'm putting out like 5 or 6. You know, I'm just jumping back and forth, especially if there's a... Uh... Oh, like a hero or something cast during a raid. Bling Strikes, I played with Bling Strikes when I was in Mists of Pandaria, but these are definitely going to be better. We already talked about Intimidation and Binding Shot, we already talked about Murder Crow, except for Barrage, I've never, never, I've never liked Barrage, even back in Mists of Pandaria, because I was always aggroing something inadvertently whenever I tried to use it. I just never got the, either got the hang of it. Or I wouldn't be thinking about a different ad that's out in the range. Volley's good for Mythic, so I, if I went to a uh, you know Mythic Plus, I would switch over from from Murder Crow to Volley. With Volley going, then the style I play, I do would end up getting a little bit more uh, focus hungry. So if I went with Volley, then I would also change over to uh, Dire Stable. So this last one, most of the time you're going to have Killer Cobra recommended if when you look at guides but with having the legendary feet you don't want to because you will end up mana uh, no, we kept wanting to say mana starved focus starved so i use aspect of the beast especially since i primarily do solo content with the tenacity every time you use a kill command your pet gets a 30 percent damage reduction for six seconds you know the cooldown beast wrath is one and a half minutes but you know, every time you're using Dire Beast, with especially with these uh, shoes, and then if we're with one of the pack and a high, higher crit, you'll be casting Dire Beast a lot, and you'll cut that cooldown a lot very often. So when I go into a raid, I use a pet that's on a, a Frosty spec for that damage increase. And I might start playing with a... Um, usually I've had my, in PvP, I've been having my pet with Ferocity, just for the increased damage, but I might start using it with Cunning for that, that speed reduction. Let's just look at what pets I have in, on me at all times. I have a turtle. I've never really used it. I just figure, well, if I end up finding, you know, finding something that's hard and I'm having difficulty, I can switch over to turtle for that, uh, for that shell ability and get a little bit extra damage reduction. PvP, I use a scorpion for the. Uh, God, I wish for the name of it. 
what you want to call it? Monstrous wounds, grievous wounds, something like that. Where it gives them a, uh, a healing debuff. They don't heal or whenever they cast the healing abilities, that it only it cuts down the amount that they heal. May move that over to a pet that gives a, an additional slow with the cunning. My raid pet, though, I always have a pink crane on because it's got the. Uh, Let's just get it out here. All right, it's got the gift of Chiji, uh, Chiji. So when you're out of combat, the res ability has a 10 minute cooldown. But I noticed in raids, when you're in combat, that cooldown is actually at four minutes. Although it's, sometimes it's, it'll automatically pop it, you know, automatically rest somebody for some weird reason. I mean, it's not a, you know, when you look at the spell book here, you know, Growl has that revolving dashes. It's where you can have it to be automatic or not. But the gift of uh, GG does not have that revolving. But with that four minute uh, battle res cooldown, it's pretty nice. Typically hold it. Make sure that we're not going to have a tank or a healer to go down first. But if it's looking like, you know, we're not going to lose a tank or healer. And, you know, before the boss dies, then I'll pop a DPS. I'll usually glance over back and forth between who's dead in the raid list and who's, you know, doing top damage. Some helpful add-ons you could have. This is just what I use. Other people use other add-ons. I don't have a like a raid UI add-on. I just have I have Angry World Quests, which is pretty nice. It'll show you the world quests over here on the side. I also have the Argus Handy Notes. So it'll show you where all the different little chests are, and then it'll also show you the boss if the boss is active, if it's actively spawning. It'll be, you know, be surrounded in green. And then it'll also show you the stuff that drops from the, the bosses. And whether you have that item or not, which is really handy. And so if you want to check to say where you know, this one boss is, you can look, okay, that's where he's going to be. And like I said, it also shows you on the, both the mini map and the, and the large map where the chests are. All right, let's get back to the add-ons I use. I also use GTFO. Everybody should use GTFO because it tells you if you're standing in AOE or if you're like in a path of something that's going to happen. That's handy notes with with Argus. I use in-flight timer because I like to be able when I you know click on a flight, I like to know okay I'm going to have four minutes until I arrive to that destination, or I'm going to have one minute. Or maybe I'm going to go to a place that's in between two flight points and I can see, you know, okay, this flight point's going to be a little faster. I'll take this one instead. That way I just know, okay, I, you know, I got two minutes. I'll go, you know, go get a sandwich or something. I usually use the Norganus slide bar. I think it comes with some of the other, uh, other ones I have. Uh, NPC scan, mostly for old stuff, but then also let me know if, uh, you know, an Argus Elite is nearby. You use it for old stuff to if you're trying you know mount farming or something you can go look to see where they are the uh the npc scan overlay at least at this time was causing problems and if you go to the website for the for npc scan look in the forums or comments i found a way that you could fix it manually or use spawn to tell me what you know what uh something is an upgrade or not and I use the manual or I changed my weights to what the uh, icy vein says you know, I have my critical strike higher than the other ones default pawn weights are okay I'd probably read some guides and then adjust the weights you see pet trigger because I like you know collecting the pets I don't usually do battle pets though I don't pvp about battle pet rarity just lets kind of let you know how many times you've tried to get a drop so every time 
you, know, you open up that chest or whatever, it'll tell say how many attempts. Which is kind of nice to know. It's not no, nothing you actually need. Recount, uh, damage meters. If you're in, I usually use LFR, so I don't really care about the damage meters so much. But it's just kind of nice to know, you know, what damage you're doing with what abilities. Um, there used to be a way to show your pet. Anyways, get that off my. Oh, uh, oh well. Figure out how to get rid of that menu later, but I'll just show you. I just, I just like to know, like in raids and dungeons, just generally where I'm at. Make sure I'm not bottom barrel. Because, like, especially with the LFR, you're gonna get a large range of different people who have different play styles, different high levels, different trinkets. I usually, usually just use it mostly for information for myself. You know, you can use it has all sorts of different graphs. And when you're doing, like, if you're doing raid progression, you know, you can see how much damage you're doing. Should be able to do more. And TomTom's really nice because TomTom gives me this, uh, like, a GPS coordinate. And you could do, like, uh, well, let's get the heck out of here. So if you type in, like, slash way, and you put a coordinate in, It'll give you not only an arrow here to show you which you know which way to go and show you how close you are, but it also shows you it should show you a small arrow on your mini map. Yeah, that's all we got. We will talk at you later.